Please welcome to the stage, Chair of the Global Ties U.S. Board of Directors and Divisional Vice President of World Learning, Patricia Harrison. Hello and welcome to this plenary luncheon, Rebuilding Community with Global Alumni. And Ramadan Kareem to those observing, we appreciate your presence here today. I'm Patricia Harrison, Divisional Vice President of Professional Exchanges at World Learning and the Board Chair for Global Ties US. This plenary gives us an opportunity to reflect on the ways that the Global Ties Network builds community globally and the contributions you continue to make to build the critical relationships that we need for our alliances and for a more peaceful, prosperous world. We will honor and recognize the winner of the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change and hear from the U.S. Department of State on how the network helps to advance U.S. foreign policy goals through exchanges and alumni engagement. I also want to take a moment to recognize that for the first time in three years, we have welcomed back our international alumni partners, many of whom are in the room today. Will you please join me in welcoming our alumni? This year, Global Ties US launched its international alumni program to continue year-round relationship building, and we're proud to be in closer contact with them to continue to build those relationships. And we are excited to welcome back Vicente Lopez Iboa Mayor. Vicente is a sponsor of the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change and the Honorary Committee Chair for the International Alumni Program. Vicente is himself an IVLP alumnus and serves as Honorary President of Via Circulo Jefferson in Spain. Thanks to his generous sponsorship, Global Ties US recognizes IVLP alumni who are making an impact locally and globally each year at the national meeting. Before we get into the awards, we're lucky to hear from someone who knows the power of building alumni relationships, Rafiq Mansour. Rafiq Mansour currently serves as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy in the Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. A career member of the Senior Foreign Service, Class of Minister Counselor, Deputy Assistant Secretary Mansour served as U.S. Chargé d'Affaires, Chief of Mission in Singapore from 2019 to 2021. Prior to his assignment in Singapore, he served as Deputy Chief of Mission and Chargé d'Affaires ad interim of the U.S. Embassy in Yerevan, Armenia. From 2014 to 2016, he was the Senior Deputy Director of Public Diplomacy in the Bureau of European and Eurasian Affairs helping lead public diplomacy efforts, policy, and resources in 50 countries. Other assignments included public affairs officer in Libya and Algeria, cultural counselor in Iraq and France, political officer in Italy, and political and economic officer in Russia. He began his foreign service career as vice consul in Haiti. He holds a BS degree in biology and a BA in French literature from the University of California, Irvine. He later received a master's degree in national security strategy from the National War College. He speaks Arabic, Russian, French, Italian, and Creole. Please welcome to the stage Rafiq Mansour. Greetings, everyone. What a beautiful spring day it is today. And on behalf of Secretary of State Blinken and my Assistant Secretary Lee Satterfield, it's really a pleasure and an honor to be with you today. Allow me to first congratulate our partners at Global Ties US for a successful national meeting this week. It's an enormous effort to bring everybody here together. But Global Ties always manages to make it seem effortless. We in ECA are so grateful to have Global Ties as an implementing partner and for connecting us with all of you. Allow me to share a few reflections on how our collective engagement with exchange program alumni 
is key to the success of our foreign policy. And I really mean that. What you do directly advances U.S. foreign policy interests. Your work hosting IVLP visitors in communities across the United States makes a real difference in building long-term relationships between the rising generation of world leaders and Americans in virtually every community in the United States. You know, as you're probably aware, currently one-third of global leaders are alumni of U.S. government programs. That's remarkable when you think about it. And in no, small, in, in no small part is thanks to all of you. In my service at embassies overseas, I have met so many IVLP alumni, and more often than anything else, it's the direct interaction that they have had with Americans during the, their visit that they have found most transformative. The work that you do leads to real human connections that make the difference when we engage them years later as they rise to become leaders in every corner of society in almost every country of the world. It is this relationship building that defines ECA's role in creating alliances central to our foreign policy. This morning, you heard Assistant Secretary Satterfield refer to the national security strategy as our roadmap that guides foreign policy and how it identifies investing in the sources of American power and influence, as well as leveraging like-minded allies on shared challenges as top priority for the Biden administration. Exchange alumni networks are key to both those efforts. With nearly two million alumni among them, over 500,000 U.S. citizens who have returned from these life-changing programs to their communities ready to come together to take on the challenges of our times. The work that you all do supporting exchanges like the IVLP plants a seed that is cultivated long after the exchanges end. It happens organically through the connections created in your communities, but also as part of ECA's Office of Alumni Affairs. Responsibilities. We bring together millions of alumni from hundreds of US government-supported exchange programs to build a lifelong relationship between the alumni and the US government. We have always done this overseas through our alumni coordinators at U.S. embassies, and now one of our recent policy priorities is a new focus on supporting the half million U.S. citizen alumni of our exchanges. Since last year's national security strategy, apologies, since last year's national meeting, the Office of Alumni Affairs began working with Global Ties to implement career connections, professional development seminars, and the Citizen Diplomacy Action Fund, CDAF, small grants competition under the U.S. Exchange Alumni Network and Capacity Building Program Cooperative Agreement. With the support of the community-based members around the country, last year we implemented three career connections, professional development seminars in Albuquerque, Boston, and Washington, D.C., in addition to three virtual sessions. I had the fortune to participate in the session in Boston and was impressed both by the achievements of the alumni who joined the event as well as the outstanding organization of the session by World Boston. This year, we will continue to deepen our reach to alumni across the country with sessions in Indianapolis, as well as in San Francisco and Charlotte, all made possible by superb support from the CBMs on the ground in those cities. With robust CBM support, we have also reached record numbers 
of grant applications for CDAF, our small grants program, that provides up to $10,000 for U.S. citizen alumni-led teams for public service small grant initiatives. These projects are truly transformative, and each one is focused on a key foreign policy priority. From strengthening democratic institutions to protecting the environment to developing alumni networks among underserved communities, as well as many others. This program empowers alumni in your communities to work together to address both local as well as global challenges. This year, we are excited to announce the launch of a new initiative, a public photo exhibit called Impact of Exchange Stories from U.S. Exchange Alumni will feature photos and stories competitively selected from U.S. Exchange alumni and will travel to five cities across the United States in 2023 and 2024. The collection will underscore the power of exchange programs and highlight the importance the important role of U.S. exchange alumni in American diplomacy at home and abroad, seeking to engage the viewer in scenes of everyday life, community, and nature through the lens of those who participated in our exchanges. These programs highlight just a few of the new ways in which we are collaborating with the network to engage with our U.S. citizen exchange alumni community here at home. I want to stress that we in ACA cannot do this alone. Our efforts on alumni engagement domestically hinge on the work that you're all doing every day to promote, develop, and strengthen programming for exchange participants and your citizen alumni alike in your communities across the country. Finally, as we discuss building community this week, I want to highlight a powerful new tool to bring together alumni in the digital space. In the next month, ECA will launch a new Exchange Alumni website. This new resource will provide a private experience that enables alumni to connect with each other across programs and countries, set up mentorships, search for events, participate in discussions, access online periodicals, research journals and grant resources, and also update contact information in real time. One thing we are really excited about in ECA is that this site will be open to ECA staff and implementing partners to allow you to more easily engage with participants that you have hosted as well as with other exchange alumni that have connections to your community. While the site will not be accessible to alumni until late April, today the site goes live for NGO partners. So we are looking forward to seeing how you utilize this new resource to connect with alumni. The Office of International Visitors will be in touch soon with more details, including how to sign up. Again, thank you all for your support of our exchange programming. Without further ado, I have the honor to introduce a statement from our 71st Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. Secretary Blinken has a genuine interest in our exchange programs. In almost every visit he makes overseas or domestically, he meets with exchange participants and alumni. I have no doubt that he will echo not only the importance of exchange participant and alumni engagement that I've touched on today, but also the critical role that all of you play in making these connections possible. Thank you very much. Let me begin with a special welcome to all representatives of Global Ties member organizations to implementing partners like the National Program Agencies, as well as State Department colleagues who run the International Visitor Leadership Program, our premier professional exchange program. More than 225,000 people from around the world have traveled to the United States as part of IVLP, including leaders like New Zealand's former Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, and the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, and public health experts like Dr. Mamadou Bougre, 
whose 2010 IVLP inspired him to set up organizations in Malta that are providing shelter and health services to immigrants and refugees. 62 years after its founding, Global Ties continues to build bonds between Americans and people around the world. Since we last spoke, more than 3,900 new IVLP participants have come to the United States to trade best practices on tackling the global climate crisis, countering misinformation and disinformation, combating the illicit spread of fentanyl, among many other great challenges of our time. IVLP participants leave behind an indelible mark here in the United States. And they do the same when they return home, drawing on all they've seen, heard, and learned traveling across our country. For Anas Hanafi, his meetings with social justice organizations through Global Ties Kalamazoo inspired him to create his own organization focused on youth empowerment in Turin, Italy, which had welcomed large numbers of refugee youth in recent years. Anas is the winner of this year's IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change for connecting dozens of Ukrainian and Afghan refugees with mentorship opportunities in his community. Ultimately, it's through efforts like these that we can make progress on the defining challenges of our time, one individual, project, and community at a time. As all of you know very well, our work at home and our work abroad are inextricably linked. Addressing today's challenges, therefore, requires drawing on the perspectives and expertise of our local leaders, as well as their counterparts abroad. That's why we recently launched a sub-national diplomacy office at the State Department, an office that I hope will serve as a resource and partner for your crucial work. When Angela Benedicto, a civil society activist, first traveled to Michigan for her 2013 IVLP, it was in part to learn techniques to defend the rights of children who'd been forced into domestic labor in Tanzania. She didn't expect to develop a lifelong friendship with her hosts, the Potratz family, or to build enduring professional partnerships with community organizations in southern Michigan. But connections she developed in her three weeks in the United States were so strong that in 2020, Angela returned to her host community, this time passing her own lessons to staff at a U.S.-based organization, Mersey Tate Explorers, dedicated to supporting greater educational and career opportunities for girls in Michigan. And of course, Angela stayed with the Potratz family again. These are the kind of lasting connections that Global Ties has made possible for decades. We look forward to finding new ways to build our partnership, both at this year's national meeting and in the years to come. Thank you for this essential work. And now, for the 2023 IVLP Alumni Award presentation, please welcome to the stage founder of the IVLP Alumni Award and member of the Global Ties U.S. Advisory Council, Vicente Lopez Ibor Mayor. Good afternoon, dear friends. It is an honor, a great pleasure to be here again. And after three years, very complicated ones. And I would say that I feel some emotion to be with all of you, uh, friends, for many years, and taking the and having the honor to participate in this in this magnificent event uh, before this uh, wonderful and very large uh, audience. Uh, dear President and CEO Catherine Brown, distinguished members of the board, uh, members of the Advisory Council, distinguished authorities, ambassadors, members of uh, high representatives from the Department of State, uh, dear friends of, of Global Ties, it's a great pleasure to be with you on this afternoon. This annual meeting always reminds us of the importance of dialogue, of the value of democracy and free personal exchanges public diplomacy. We continue to live after these three years difficult times, not only in Europe, where I come in from, but all around the world. But in difficult times, we appreciate we need more than ever the greatness of commitment, of values, of solidarity, of mutual support here in this land of freedom and throughout the world. The 21st century, we are not only citizens of our land, of our country, of our nation, we are also citizens of the world because we have common purposes and responsibilities. The annual Global Ties US IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Climate Change recognizes alumni 
of the U.S. Department of State in the National Visitors Leadership Program for achievements driving social change in their home communities. And where these are selected from a broad range of fields, culture, government services, arts, science, media, business, and education. As you can see, these awards recognize the work of international leaders. And the essence is leadership. That is the substantive part of, of our award. Leaders who are sometimes silent, but strong and exemplary. Charismatic leaders with different profiles, but common values who multiply the commitment and success of all of us. We have awarded in other editions the value of our fight against climate change, the defense of gender equality rights, the international security. Today, we talk with more emphasis than ever about democracy in the cradle of constitutionalism. Spain, my country, bet in the Cortes de Cadiz in 1812. It was the James Madison presidency time for freedom and liberalism. The U.S. Declaration of Independence is a monument to democracy and the Constitution of 1787 to federalism and understanding between people and territories in a single and great nation. Today, in Global Ties, this 2023 nomination cycle sought to identify the alumni in Europe. It's not by hazard that we are talking in this, in this case of Europe. These these candidates who have demonstrated social innovation and global leadership in the areas of democratic engagement and civic renewal. Democracy is a journey, as Jennifer Clinton, Clinton rightly wrote, a permanent journey. Our winner this year is a social activist in innovation with advocate and found different initiatives on that field. He is uh, an Italian, uh, by adoption, uh, and he is an in immigrant, and he is founder and president of the Italian Inclusion Leaders Network, supported by the German Malsan Fund, uh, where he works to increase access to opportunities for those who are otherwise excluded or underserved. Employee by a law firm in Torino, Anas Hanafi is completing a Master of Legal Studies at the University of Turin. Better than me, the Secretary of State, I have the very high honor to be preceded by the Secretary of State, explain all the merits and recognitions and the efforts and the impressive career that Anas Hanafi has done during all these years. And he's also partner of uh, the a NGO Nuovo Radici uh, on leadership workshop on immigrant youth who he devoted more all his time. It's very impressive the words that the public affairs section of U.S. Consulate General in Milano share about Anas by saying that he has demonstrated a powerful commitment, a very impressive one to facilitate a positive social change, always positive. And for that reason, I believe, of course, in promoting equity, inclusion, and, and doing this impressive work for young people, in, immigrants in, in Italy. This year also, but I would also like to emphasize how difficult for, was for the selecting committee to prepare and to decide this candidature. Because we have many, many good candidates, as you have seen from the screen. Anouk was impressive. Olesia from Ukraine. And I would like to once again express our support to your work and to your country. Uh, because your country is our country. This year, thanks to the vision and generosity of Catherine Brown and uh, all her team of Global Ties, Global Ties has decided to reinforce the international uh, coordination with the Lomni community. It has been already mentioned. Thank you so much for this, this mention. Everyone's voice will be heard once again, to strengthen our programs and our international presence. I would like to thank you all once again for this opportunity. Be very happy to what extent this award is uh, vegan, 
uh, being greater and, and, and greater, I, I'm, I'm sure that it would be more people bringing together to help uh, this, this award to be more international recognized, not only here, but in other parts of the world, always by the brand and the identity and the core of, of global ties. And, and above all, congratulations to our friend Anas Hanafi, and on behalf of him, to all of the candidates for the extraordinary commitment they are proving and from this recognition. Thank you very much indeed. Hanan. Well, it's, it's a real honor to be here among all of you. Dear esteemed guests, distinguished colleagues, it's a great privilege and honor to be standing before you today, accepting the award for the 2023 Global Ties US IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change. I am really humbled by this recognition and grateful for the opportunity to participate in such a meaningful program. My name is Anna Sanafi, as they said. I'm from Italy, and I'm a trainee lawyer and the founder and president of NILI, Italian Inclusion Leaders Network. My parents are originally from Morocco, and they migrated to Italy 33 years ago, and they decided to let me live in, in Italy and in Europe. My VLP program was held online, unfortunately, in 2021. It was programmed by World Learning in Washington, D.C., in coordination with Global Ties, Kalamazoo, San Antonio Council for International Visitors, and World Orlando. To the International Visitor Leadership Program, I was able to meet with leaders from all over Europe and the U.S., discovering the social, political, and economical issues with other young European leaders. We shared our experiences, we learned from each other, and we established collaboration between nations and creating a new passion and network that was uh, passionate individuals who strive to create a better society. This program has reinforced my beliefs in the importance of building bridges between cultures and fostering international understanding. It has taught me that regardless of our differences, we all share a common humanity. We all can work together to achieve common goals. But more importantly, the IVLP reinforced my belief in the power of people-to-people -people exchange. I saw firsthand how this program fostered the relationship between individuals and how those relationships, in turn, led to partnerships, collaborations, and enduring friendships. It was a reminder that no matter of our differences, we share a common humanity and can work together to achieve common goals. As I reflect on my time in the program and I'm struck by the profound impact it had on me, particularly when combined with my experience with the Italian Inclusion Leaders Network, formed by youngsters with migrant background like me. Most of them have similar story like mine. Most of them have multiple identities and most of the time, they weren't seen as a plus for the society, but as a minus. During my path, I met several youngsters that were experiencing the same situation, and I always thought on how to solve this. So I would like to take a moment to talk about the work that we have done with the Italian Inclusion Leaders Network. This organization is dedicated to promoting diversity and inclusion in Italy, and I am proud to have been a part on its mission. To my work with the network, I've had the opportunity to work with some incredible individuals who are committed to creating a more inclusive society. We collaborated on a variety of initiatives, including community outreach program, educational workshop, and advocacy campaigns. 
So my experience with the Italian Inclusion Leaders Network reinforced the beliefs in the importance of democracy and inclusion. We started by working on training our youngsters, like, like me, with migrant background, to be ready to be part of the society and become civil servants. So we had the privilege of creating a mentorship program for youth leaders with immigrant backgrounds, like with Afghan and Ukrainians, meeting with leaders who are working tirelessly to promote social inclusion and combat discrimination. Their passion and dedication were truly inspiring, and I'm really grateful to be here and for this opportunity to have learned from their expertise. So I've seen firsthand how citizens can come together to create meaningful change and make difference in their community. This experience has strengthened my beliefs that democracy isn't something we should take for granted, but rather something that needs to be actively fought for and nurtured. I'm ready to work actively protecting our democratic values and doing my part, clawing, closing the gaps by creating bridges and working toward a more inclusive society. I am deeply grateful to the organizers of the International Visitor Leadership Program for providing me with this invaluable opportunity. I would also like to thank my fellow participants for sharing their diverse perspective and experiencing with me. I also want to extend my thanks to Dr. Vincente Lopez Ibor, the Global Ties US for the opportunity, the US Consulate General of Milan, and of course, the Italian Inclusion Leaders Network. <laughs> Finally, I want to leave you with a quote. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I could not have achieved this without the support and encouragement of my family, friends, and colleagues. They have been my rock, my sounding board, and my inspiration. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage Deputy Director, Office of International Visitors, U.S. Department of State, Ali Baskey. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Anas, for your amazing and impactful efforts. Um, just so inspirational. Uh, you heard my name is Ali Baskey. For those of you who don't know me, I am Deputy Director of the Office of International Visitors. That's my pleasure. Um, as Vicente mentioned in his remarks, the selection committee for this year's IVLP Alumni Award had a very difficult task ahead of us. And we had a lot of very competitive candidates. Um, in addition to Anas, of course, who's, uh, who we heard from today, we were, luck were lucky enough this year to have, uh, be able to announce that we had an honorable mention um, in this category this year. And so I'm pleased to, um, to introduce you to uh, Yona Rizvanoli of Tirana, Albania. As a Foreign Service officer over, when I'm overseas, we nominate, uh, when we nominate a participant for IVLP, we consider not only the work they are involved in and their position in their communities, which are important criteria for selecting participants, but we also look for the spark that will be ignited by coming to the United States and being a part of this great program. Yona exemplifies this ideal. She is a software engineer who dedicates her time and skills as an educator and alumni leader, working to promote the advancement of women in tech, science, math, and engineering. Yona visited five cities during her IVLP, thanks to programming organized by Graduate School USA here in DC, Global New Orleans, Global Ties Kansas City, the World Affairs Council of Seattle, and World Boston. Yona is one of the founders and mentors of the Technovation Club at the American Corner at the US Embassy in Tirana, an international platform that brings together young girls to develop innovative solutions addressing concerns in their communities. She led the 2019 team of Albanian girls in the International Tech Innovation World Pitch Summit in Silicon Valley, where they competed against teams from all over the world and won first prize with their app to stop domestic violence. Yona also contributed to efforts 
to welcome and engage Afghan refugees in Albania. As you'll hear from her soon, she and her twin sister created the Together for Inclusion program, which guided 40 Afghan youth through interactive robotics modules using tiny pocket-sized computers. This outreach program helped foster community building and offered the participants marketable skills in coding. The program was so successful that Yona is now working on a second iteration for youth from Pakistan in Albania. So we're delighted to present an honorable mention for the Alumni Award for Social Inv Innovation and Change to Yona Rizvanoli. Yona can't be with us in person at the national meeting, but she did take time to pre-record remarks to share with everyone today. So I am pleased to introduce her now. Respected selection committee members, Global Ties US leadership and staff, commun community-based members, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to receive such an important award, Honorable Mention IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change. I'm grateful for the recognition I've received for my work because I'm confident that every other nominee for this award was as capable of winning this award. Back in the days in 2019, I was nominated for Advancing Women in STEM IVLP program. Little did I know how that once in a lifetime experience in the US would forever change and impact my daily work, but not only. Winning this honor would not have been possible without the inspiration I have received from all the great people I met throughout the program. Special notice to Seattle's Girls School, from whom I have the most profound respect and from whom I have derived the strength to challenge myself and perform better to each project I have come up with. Um, when people hear about social innovation and change, they do not think of technology immediately. I'm delighted to share the tremendous success the Together for Inclusion project had for its second time. Since the war started in Afghanistan, my country has been host in Afghan families with the continuous support of the US Embassy in Tirana. Together with my sis twin sister, Bruna, in three months, we mentored Afghan youth in technology programs and developed connections for cultural values. We transmitted to them uh, not only technical knowledge, but we brought to the attention once again how necessary knowledge is and that dignity always prevails, regardless of the circumstances. The entire journey was a learning experience for me, and with the success of this project, I'm more energized and ch charged to take up new challenging projects, which would work for the benefit of youngsters around the globe and have a high social impact. Once again, thank you everyone. Fanny Mendere. Well, as you can tell, Yona clearly has that spark that I mentioned. Our embassy in Tirana described her as a true alumna superstar. She is and will continue to be a key contact for our embassy there and will no doubt continue to play an integral role in improving the lives of people in Albania. Like Catherine mentioned this morning, I too have a preschool age child, so I know what the 10 p.m. rewrite of remarks is like. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the, in, the importance of, of, of our alumni, uh, in addition to Yona and Anas. There are many alumni doing amazing things around the world, and while we can't honor everyone with an alumni award, I want to share another way that we can help multiply the impact of the IVLP and support alumni to advance their goals. That's, that is the IVLP Alumni Impact Awards, now in its second year. These are small follow-on grants to recent IVLP alumni. Last year, we gave 215 of these grants to alumni from 90 countries. Through their efforts, our alumni have been able to impact thousands of others in their countries and communities, thanks to the IVLP Impact Awards. And this year, we hope to give another 325 grants. The idea behind these awards is to reinforce the alumni's exchange experience by helping them take what they have learned here during their IVLP and apply it to issues back facing their home communities. The ideal project leverages knowledge, contacts, or inspirations from an IVL visit, visit to one of, or more of your communities to help them then solve challenges at home. To give you just a few small examples, 
Linda Lopez led an online leadership and entrepreneurship program focused on empowering women entrepreneurs in Peru. Linda mentioned that a resource from her virtual IVLP on women entrepreneurship organized by CRDF Global in October of 2021 was also a guest speaker in one of her workshops. The resource was the female CEO of the Catalyst Center for Business and Entrepreneurship in Huntsville, Alabama. Linda told us, I met her in one of our IVLP sessions and felt so inspired by her that I knew she had to be part of my project. Konstantin Nevzorov from Kazakhstan visited on an IVLP on developing agricultural statistics and commodity markets organized through Cultural Vistas. In his Impact Award application, he said he was inspired by his visit to Lincoln, Nebraska, when the group was received with warm hospitality and were invited to a crawfish boil at Turbine Flats. He wanted to give Ukrainian refugees in Kazakhstan a similar experience where they could feel welcomed and culturally connected in a new place while building professional networks. Lastly, Maria Matrosyan from Armenia was on the Global Moment in Time Peace and Justice Project organized by IIE, and she told us her Impact Award project was inspired by the community-based juvenile restorative justice practices applied in the Gang Reduction and Youth Development, or GRYD, office uh, in the LA Mayor's office. Her project sought to share the practices and tools of G GYRD to better manage juvenile cases in Armenia. There are many more stories like these alumni sparked by some meeting or moment during their IVLP to affect positive change at home. I encourage all of you to visit Meridian International Center's website and read about the exciting projects that the awardees to date have produced, and you may recognize some of the visitors who visited uh, your communities. And the demand for these impact awards from our alumni remains high. This year, we've already received 250 completed applications from 85 countries. The application period closes this Sunday. So please encourage any 2022 IVLP alumni with whom you're in touch to submit their applications. And we hope to offer one more round of these impact awards in 2024. I also wanna share on a personal note that this is also my last, last national meeting. Um, it is hard to think that I'll be leaving this post soon after three eventful and odd, somewhat odd <laughs> years. <I> was, <laughs> um, when I started, we were all just boxes on screens still, and I'm not sure people believed I actually existed outside of <laughs> Zoom, Zoom world, sometimes WebEx, but yeah. Yet here I stand before you, and it is so, so heartening and reassuring to see you all assembled here together as one. You are the lifeblood of the IVLP, undeniably the best tool in the public diplomacy toolbox. I have so enjoyed meeting with you and working with you, and I look forward to staying connected to the IVLP and all of you in my first future assignments. And so I applaud you. <laughs> now a brief bit of housekeeping. I'm to announce the next afternoon sessions available to you today. So following this lunch, you are welcome to attend the Federal Agency Exhibitor Open House in the Skyview Atrium uh, to meet and talk with representatives from 12 federal agencies and, office within, and offices within the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. The IVLP is a whole of government approach, and these agencies are eager to speak with you about their work and ways you can help make critical connections for international visitors. And I'm told the sweetener is there's going to be coffee and dessert there as well. <laughs> and for those of you inclined or looking for some more IVRC, IVR Resource Center hands-on training, in the Fairfax room. <laughs> All right, enthusiasm back there, I love it. Um, about how to create appointments and contacts in the database, our IT trainers are looking forward to working with you and answering all of your questions. Thank you for your kind attention and enjoy the afternoon, everyone. <laughs>